Welcome to the Family Ties Podcast, where we discuss the lesser known and shocking true crime cases of children who are victims of abuse, neglect, torture, and murder. The goal is to shed light on these lesser known crimes and bring awareness to viewers and listeners about the state of children's rights, the failings of CPS to save children, and how crimes against children get less coverage than crimes involving adult victims. Since the last episode aired about Thomas Valva, there have been some developments in the trial. If you haven't watched or listened to Thomas' story, I urge you to go back an episode and check it out. As of November 4th of 2022, the jury has reached a guilty verdict for Michael Valva, Thomas Valva's father, abuser, and murderer. Michael was found guilty of five charges, second-degree murder, and four counts of endangering the welfare of a child. In December of 2022, Michael Valva was sentenced to 25 years to life. ABC7 News reports, a tearful Valva read a statement to the judge before being sentenced. My actions were neglectful and abusive to my boys, resulting in the tragic death of Thomas, Valva said. The defense asked for a lesser sentence and highlighted Valva's career in law enforcement, but the judge still threw the book at him and gave him the maximum sentence, which I'm very, very pleased about. How did all of us, as a community, allow this to happen, said an equally emotional Judge William Condon. I don't think you intended to kill Thomas, not at all, he said to Valva, who was still crying. But there is no getting around that Thomas and Anthony lived their lives in constant duress in the place they should have felt safest, their own home. I have to point out how impressed I am to see an article from January 18th written for Patch.com by Lisa Finn uh, that talks about the impact that Thomas's story had on the jury during the trial. Uh, I'm going to read a brief snippet for you. Many of the jurors who stood outside the courtroom after Valva's sentencing told Patch, their voices broken, that the way they look at life, at children, at everything will never be the same now. They want to fight for change. They want to create a world that's safe for all the children in their lives. And they want more than anything to keep Thomas's memory alive so that no other little boy has to shiver uncontrollably in the frigid night air, crying out for help, knocking on doors and walls with the faint hope that someone somehow, someday will come to help. On every birthday, on every cruel anniversary of Thomas Valva's death, when he was just eight years old, they will remember his sweet, smiling face light and radiant with hope, their own lives forever darkened by the ending of his story, a story that no one was able to rewrite. Michael Valva's ex-fiancee, Angela Polina's trial, uh, was scheduled to start taking place in February of 2023, so that should be well underway, and I will keep you all posted as information comes out. But I did want to share that with you, that there had been some developments. Today's episode is about the disappearance and murder of 20-month-old Quentin Simon, a tragedy that shook the small town of Savannah, Georgia. On the morning of October 5th, 2022, Quentin's mother, 23-year-old Leilani Simon, called the police to report that her son was missing from their home on Buckhalter Road. Quentin had last been seen in his playpen around 6 a.m. before he is noticed to be missing around 9 a.m. Leilani claimed she found the front door open, suggesting that someone had come in and taken him. The search for Quentin involved several agencies, including the FBI, and the entire community was in shock as they tried to find the missing toddler. Chatham County Police, Savannah Mounted Patrol, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, a Liberty County Sheriff's Office canine team, a Mosquito Control helicopter, and neighbors participated in the first searches for missing baby Quentin. So there were a lot of different agencies involved here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you guys through a timeline, but I'll shout out dates here and there just to kind of let you guys know where we are within that timeline. So on Thursday, October 6th of 2022, Chatham County Police Chief um, held a press conference to provide updates on the search for Quentin. So the day after he'd been reported missing and the search had um, had begun. Quentin's grandparents technically had custody of the toddler, and court documents obtained by WJCL News indicates that the grandmother, Billy Jo Howell, was trying to get Leilani and her boyfriend Daniel out of her home. This would indicate that for some reason or another, Leilani and her boyfriend were living with Billy Jo and had kind of outstayed their welcome. But once again, this is conjecture. 
I don't know the full story here. So on Friday, October 7th, detectives continue the search, including searches of the home, backyard pool, and a pond. And the FBI continues to aid this investigation. Then a few days later, on October 11th, police find and seize evidence that is believed will close this investigation. Um, at this point, I'm not sure what that evidence is, but um, as soon as we do have that information, I will be sure to update you and let you know. The following day on October 12th, WJCL News reported that the Chatham County Police later issue a statement saying in part, we are saddened to report that CCPD and the FBI have notified Quentin Simon's family that we believe he is deceased. We have named his mother Leilani Simon as the prime suspect in his disappearance and death, but no arrests have been made and no charges had been filed. So for them to speak out like this, they have to have more than just a good hunch that um, Leilani was involved in this. So I don't think they would just come out and suggest someone like this right off the bat if they didn't have some pretty, I would say, compelling evidence. Then on Thursday, October 13th, Chatham County Police and FBI hold a joint conference to announce that the evidence found and the search has led them to believe that Quentin is deceased and that Leilani Quentin, Quentin's mother is their primary suspect. A few days later, police and FBI share details that Quentin's body has, had been put into a dumpster and had been taken to the nearby landfill, and that searches continued to locate Quentin's remains. The very day after the police, you know, share this information that Quentin's body was dumped into, put into a dumpster and taken to a landfill, witnesses then report seeing Leilani and her mother, Billy Jo Howell, at a Tibby Island establishment, just drinking shots. No big deal. WJCL News also learned that police were called to a Tibby motel twice after hecklers discovered Quentin's family members were staying there. So this is going to be a theme in this story here, where you have very vocal public displays of people who have, you know, already made up their minds that this is the perpetrator, Leilani is guilty. And regardless of if that's true or not, they come to this conclusion very quickly and they do, you know, heckle and, and end up really causing more trouble than, than demanding answers. So it's not really a helpful kind of um, public accountability or public interest. This is just kind of one of those things that just borders on harassment. And I just don't, I don't support it at all. You can make your voice heard, but I don't think that you should show up to anyone's home or harass them in places and you're you have nothing to do with the trial or investigation i just think that that's out of line but it happens all the time then okay so we're going to jump about a week later and um on october 24th wjcl news reports that the search at the landfill resumes so Prior to this, the reason that they had paused the search was there were some conditions at the landfill. I mean, with people there every single day, countless hours searching, uh, the conditions, they were having an impact on people's health. And so they were kind of uh, told, like, you have to stop searching for now, you know, because toxins, all these different things that you think of um, being in a landfill, they're having to deal with and sift through by hand. So... There was a pause, a very brief pause, and then on the 24th, that search did resume. In an interview, Leilani Simon goes as far as to say, she hopes her son will be found happy and alive, and said she's not hiding from law enforcement. So four weeks after Quentin was reported missing, Chatham County Police issued this statement. Four weeks ago today, we received a call that would spark the largest search and most far-reaching investigation in the history of the Chatham County Police Department. It was the call that little Quinton Simon was missing. So then in November, there's a fifth instance where police have to arrest protesters outside of Quinton's home. So, I mean, the, the heckling situation's going strong a month later. So finally, almost two months after Quinton first went missing, human remains were found in the landfill and authorities believe it is Quentin. And on Monday, November the 28th, the FBI confirms that the remains are indeed Quentin's. WJCL News reports that Leilani Simon is charged in the murder of her missing toddler, as well as concealing the death of another. 
false statements or writings to conceal facts, or fraudulent documents in matters of government and false reports of a crime. Now we're going to jump forward to December. So Monday, December 12th, Billy Joe Howell, Quentin's grandmother, she is found in contempt of court and sentenced to serve 10 days in jail. I personally would really like to hear more, um, more details about this. What is Billy Joe's level of involvement here? Is she completely innocent or, or is she withholding information purposefully as well to protect Leilani? So there's a lot of holes in this story that I wish I could fill in better for you guys is what I'm trying to get to. So then Thursday, January 5th, so we're already into January of 2023 this year, when WJCL learns that federal investigators still have Quentin's remains, preventing the family from holding a funeral for the child. Now, as sad as I, I, I really think that's tragic, but there is definitely a reason they are holding his remains. From what I've seen and what I've read, I think that they, the law enforcement here, I think the agencies involved in this investigation are really doing their due diligence to make sure they have all of the details and all of the facts. But I hope that that does not get proven wrong. But it, it really does seem like they're trying to make sure that they have everything in order. Um, so I don't know what reason they would need to hold the body longer. If you guys happen to know why that, that would happen, let me know. On Monday, January 6th, WJCL News reports that Leilani Simon's lawyers asked the court to review all Department of Family and Children's Services files um, that are related to her, Quentin, and his two siblings, their fathers, and her mother, Billy Jo Howell. So according to court records, uh, Leilani requests an in-camera inspection of the records to ensure she'll receive a fair trial. Conjecture yet again, I don't know if Billy Joe has had a report or records with the DC uh, Department of Family and Children's Services filed against her for some reason, but I mean, she had custody of Quentin and Leilani did not. And one other question I would like to kind of bring to the fore is that there are two other kids that Leilani has, and it doesn't seem that they're in her custody either. So when a mother doesn't have custody of kids and a father figure does, I mean, it typically means that you've done something that makes you deemed not fit to have that child in your custody. So. With that being said, I would like to ask how Leilani was allowed to live in that house with Billy Joe Howell and Quentin if she was indeed considered to be a danger in any form to Quentin. On Wednesday, January 25th, WJCL News reports that Leilani Simon was absent from her court hearing, where a stand-in judge heard arguments from prosecutors about why media access should be denied at the murder trial. The judge did not rule on that matter at the time. But just remember, this is, this is interesting, that prosecutors are the ones who are not wanting media access to this. So I don't know if it's due to the sensitivity of the nature of this case, or what the reasoning is behind not wanting media there, but um, this request came from prosecution, not the defense, which, you know, usually is kind of the other way around. So WJCL 22 ABC News reports that the state of Georgia is seeking possible new evidence in the death of a Savannah toddler whose mother, Leilani Simon, is charged with his murder. The state has subpoenaed Aspen Dental for its records pertaining to the dental treatment of Leilani Simon between the dates of October 1st and October the 5th. We'll get into why. So also subpoenaed were any journals, diaries, and other writings of Leilani Simon currently in the possession of her mother, Billy Jo Howell, who had custody of Quentin at the time he was reported missing. So 
This whole thing about the, the dental records, I may not have the full story on this, but in part, part of the explanation here is that in December, Leilani had falsely told investigators that she had met a friend to obtain Oragel, a topical oral pain reliever. She, I think, is trying to use this as her alibi. So if they can poke holes in this and get her dental records and show, you know, if a procedure was performed or not, or, you know, the validity behind this Oragel claim, that's my impression at the moment. So Leilani faces 19 counts, including malice murder, felony murder, concealing a death, and making false statements. She's accused of killing Simon by unknown means and then disposing of his body in a dumpster at the Azalea Mobile Home Plaza during the early morning hours of October 5th before reporting him missing. After Quentin's body was found, Leilani was arrested three days later after tests at the FBI lab in Quantico, Virginia confirmed that the remains were human. I also wonder if there was any DNA evidence that they were able to collect here that really kind of sealed the deal that, yeah, let's, let's grab Leilani. So now we're into February. So February 2nd of this year, WJCL 22 News reports that the defense filed a motion to quash the subpoena issued on t January 25th to Aspen Dental and Simon's mother, Billy Joel, saying it would violate Leilani Simon's Fourth Amendment rights to unreasonable search and seizure. So they're saying in the filing, the public defender, Robert Attridge Jr., argues that the motion would in effect make Howell act as an agent of law enforcement and force her to unlawfully search for evidence as the defendant enjoys an expectation of privacy. Let me just say, Quinton was living at Billy Joe's home. That was her home. So she's not acting as an investigator. When a, there's a case, an ongoing investigation, a person may be asked to turn over certain bits of property or, you know, let investigators search the house, all of these different things. So her being ordered to kind of hand over maybe text messages or all of these different things, that's not out of the ordinary. And that is definitely, in my personal opinion, not having anything to do with making Billy Joel act as a law enforcement agent here and unlawfully search for evidence. So... I find that rather flimsy and I hope that that does not stand. So back to the dental records, uh, the, the request, the subpoena for those dental records during those specific dates. In an article by Fox News, Julie Rendleman, a New York-based criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor, told Fox News Digital she believed prosecutors were likely seeking dental records to further establish a timeline as it pertains to her whereabouts and her alleged false claims to need Oragel. So like I said, I do think it has a lot to do with trying to poke holes in Leilani's story, and we'll, we'll see if that guess proves correct. That same Fox News article goes on to reveal that Leilani Simon allegedly used an unknown object to beat her son, which did result in serious bodily injury and cause Quentin's death, the document states. So now we're, now that we're into February, we're starting to get the cause of death, it's kind of revealed a little bit. We know he was killed, but we don't know what exactly happened. So he was beaten to death, Makes, gives me cold chills. And you know, as you look at this little boy's face, you just wonder how. So the October 5th assault caused the toddler cruel and excessive physical pain, according to the court papers. That same morning, Simon allegedly traveled to Azalea Mobile Home Plaza and discarded her son's remains in a dumpster. The indictment charges. Additionally, Fox says that the indictment described how Simon met her drug dealer the day before Quentin's death on October 4th and had used controlled substances before the killing. People.com reports that the indictment against Leilani Simon alleges she caused Quentin cruel and excessive physical pain by beating him to death with an object after using drugs. So she's going to try and blame this on drugs. And I, I would have to know what exactly she was using to kind of make any other kind of judgment calls on whether I think that's bogus or legitimate. But that's where we are right now. So going back to the prosecution's report, 